Are you planning a trip to Yellowstone or the Grand Tetons and looking for a place to camp? We're going to tell you about our five favorite places to camp in this episode of Travels, Travels with, with Delaney. Delaney. Welcome back, everyone. So if you're planning a summer camping trip to Yellowstone or Teton National Parks, we thought we would share with you our five favorite places to camp whenever we go out west to those parks. But make sure you stay to the end of this video because we are going to give you a bonus campsite. So you ready to do this, Patty? I am. All right, we're gonna focus on two major areas. We're gonna focus on the West Yellowstone area, which we think is a great landing spot to explore the northern part of Yellowstone National Park. And then we're gonna move south into Grand Teton National Park, which we always use as a base camp to explore both the Grand Tetons and the lower part of Yellowstone National Park. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're gonna start up in West Yellowstone and the first campsite that we really like is a national forestry site and it's Baker's Hole. Now this is located less than four miles from the entrance to Yellowstone National Park and it's located along the scenic Madison River. It really just gives you a great location to camp in the trees. They have 73 sites of which 33 have electric right at the site, which is something always nice that you don't always find at a national forestry campground. In addition, they have potable water, they have dumpsters for your trash, and they do have toilets there. The sites are laid out really well. Never felt like I was on top of anybody. Right. Very well spaced out. Absolutely. Had a nice tent pad, and if I remember right, even a picnic table in our site. Mm -hmm. Now, rates there typically run about $20 and 28 if you want a site with electric, which really, when you think about it, an extra $8 to have electricity. Not bad at all. Not bad mm -hmm. at all. You definitely want to get there early in the day if you want to get a site as it's a uh, first come, first right. serve campground. And that particular campground in the busy summer months will fill up quickly um, just because of the proximity to West Yellowstone, mm -hmm. the town, and the park. So that's one of our favorites just because it's so close to town and to the park entrance. Now, our second favorite in that same area is a little bit farther south of West Yellowstone, down in Idaho. And um, Patty, why don't you tell them all about that one? And it's called Flat Rock. It is about 24 miles um, from Yellowstone. It has 37 sites, a seven electric, and it's just really well laid out. There's potable water, trash, very clean toilets. Um, there's always a camp host on site that's very friendly, coming around making sure you have everything that you need. Uh, we just had so much space. I remember that when we had um, both times that we've been there, they had really nice laid out areas for your picnic tables. I think there was even a cooking area um, with a grill. Um, it's just so well laid out for you to use. So. Yeah, those sites are absolutely huge at Flat Rock. <laughs> and yeah, you're right. They actually have the grills there, the picnic tables. It's laid out in two small loops. Mm -hmm. And what was also neat about that one is there's all these hiking trails and different things you could go see right there that you could walk to. I remember we did a few trails trying to get to like a waterfall and some uh, a creek. Um, it was just real nice, nice yeah. area. And if I remember right, I believe the rates were about $15 a night for the non-electric sites and around 20 or 22 for the electric sites. Now, they do only have seven electric sites mm -hmm. there. Um and that particular location does have some sites that are reservable and some that are held mm -hmm. back for walk-in only. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we definitely like it. Now, some people might say, wow, I've got to drive 24 yeah. miles just to get to the park entrance. But where it's located, um, you're close enough that you can go explore the park, but also right there in that area, there's a lot to go see yes. and do in Idaho. Very, so It's very nice, very well laid out. And if you have a four-wheeler, they have like four-wheeler trails everywhere yep. for those um, ATVs that you can go on. So now, And if you get there and you don't have a reservation there full, don't panic because just a couple more miles south, you're going to find a couple more national uh -huh. forestry campgrounds that you can check out. So just up the road from that and only 18 miles from the national park entrance is boot jack which boot jack is an absolutely free place to camp <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah it's just dispersed camping on idaho department of fish and wildlife land so basically all you do is you pull in and you just start looking for a place yep. that you think looks good to you. Now, you'll notice where people have camped before. Mm -hmm. There'll be makeshift fire rings. Yep. 
but there are absolutely no services there. There's no water, mm. there's no toilets, there's no trash, so you're going to have to take your trash with you. But what you do get is nice big open areas surrounded by pine trees where you can just pull in and set up your tent or pull in your RV and uh, hang out for up to, I believe it's 14 days at no charge. And we got lucky the night we were there. The stars were amazing. You yeah. could just sit and watch the stars. Yeah, <laughs> last year when we were there with the roads we roam, yeah. um, we were surrounded by trees, but yet where we were camped with our actual rigs, we had opening. We looked for a place intentionally so we could get solar. Mm -hmm. So we were able to get good solar, and that's what really gave us those amazing yes. views at night. Beautiful. Which, speaking of the roads we roam, <laughs> just to let you know, they had no issues getting their big Class A oh, yeah. motorhome in there. So no if you're problem. in a bigger <laughs> rig and you want to boondock, this is a great place to do it. Now. The other thing I will mention about staying south of West Yellowstone, either at Boot Jack or Flat Rock, is Island Park, Idaho has a public dump station and restrooms right off of the main road. And the last time we were there, I believe it was around $5. It's just self-serve. You pull in, you can dump, and then there's a box on the honor system to drop your money in. So that is an excellent location because when you need to dump your black and gray tanks, um, it's literally just almost across the road from mm -hmm. Flat Rock or about six miles south of Boot Jack. So, yeah. so those would be our three locations that we absolutely love camping in on the north side of Yellowstone or the northwest side of Yellowstone. So, all right, now let's move down to the Tetons. So this is an area where, again, we like to kind of set up mm -hmm. a base camp to explore the Tetons and that southern portion of Yellowstone National Park. And Patty, you want to tell them about the first location that we like? We love Coulter Bay Campground. It's located in the Grand Tetons. Um, what's great about it, it's kind of in the middle. You could, where it's located on the road, you can drive south to see the Tetons. You can still see them at certain points in Coulter Bay, or you could go north to uh, Yellowstone National Park. So that's why we liked it. Um, it is so nice. There are 346 sites. It's a big campground. Only 11, though, are electric. Um, there's water, you've got dump stations, you've got uh, trash, you've got a little like mercantile grocery uh, souvenir place. Um, when we were there, there was nice laundry facilities, there was Wi-Fi available, and of course, you know, the Huckleberry ice cream. Absolutely. <laughs> so it was just a nice place to be. Um, we rode our bikes there a little bit. There's um, trails, there's a lake, the lake right there you can go to, and I forget the name of that lake exactly, but it's just beautiful the way the Tetons reflect off of it, that you can see it. Um, and when we were there in 2019, or earlier than that, the price was $32 a night. $32 a night for the non-electric sites, and if you're fortunate enough to get one of those 11 electric sites, the rate's mm -hmm. $55. Now, this is not the Coulter Bay RV park no. that's next door that is an actual rv park with full hookups and that type of thing this is right beside this is the just the regular national park campground it's really well laid out mm -hmm. even though it's huge it's laid out very well and uh the sites i think the majority of the sites if not all the sites are kind of like a pull-off type deal where you know you just kind of pull off yep. to and into your site um and i remember we had a picnic table yep. and i believe there was a fire pit there and right across from us was a restroom area yep. and a place where people were cleaning their fish when they went fishing they had an area for that too so it was just a real nice nice spot yeah it's a little expensive mm -hmm. for no hookups per se but the the advantage of staying at Coulter Bay is you do have potable water you have restrooms um, and you have that dump station and you're plus in the park. Yeah, and you have that, uh, what they call the Coulter Bay Village, like yeah. Patty said, mm -hmm. with retail shop oh and food service and, and things like that. Don't forget so. that Huckleberry. Huckleberry ice cream. <laughs> but if you don't mind truly boondocking, mm. we're going to give you another free one, and it's probably our absolute yes. favorite place yes, yes, to yes. boondock, mm -hmm. and that's called the Lower Teton View. Now, this is going to be a little bit farther south. Um, on the way to Jackson Hole, yep. Wyoming. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be near the other national park campground, Grove Vaughn. Mm -hmm. Now, Grove Vaughn is the campground that Lolo Ho, or Long Long Honeymoon, loves to stay yep. at. And I'm going to go ahead and link that video that they talk about camping in the Tetons for you. But we love Lower Teton View because, number one, it is absolutely free. 
It is dispersed camping. However, the National Forestry Service has identified certain areas where they want you setting up. So even though it's not like camp mm -hmm. sites per se, you, you will definitely see where they want you setting up. There's no water. Nope. There's no toilets. There's no trash. But what you get, and honestly, they should charge for pay. They should. It's the views of the Tetons. You literally can walk out at your camper and see the Tetons in the distance. And to me, that makes boondocking worth it. So beautiful. I mean, we got to see the sunrise bouncing off, and we got to see the sunset, and then the stars at night. We got so lucky that uh, we, we, we found that spot. It is just gorgeous. And I think one of the things that people sometimes worry about when they're boondocking is like safety. Mm. But mm. that's not really a concern here mm. because there are camp hosts and the, the, the forestry rangers periodically drive yep. through during the day. Yep, and they come around and check on you. Check and on you, make sure. you need sure. anything and how you're doing and making sure you're abiding by the keeping your stuff away from the bears and locking up your food. Yeah, and, it really yeah. gave me a, a comfort yep. sense of, you they know, just safety. Around, they were, I think they were around two or three times in the day just checking yep, things absolutely. out. Absolutely. <laughs> Very friendly, very helpful. And yeah. so. Now, as far as getting to it, it's really not that bad. No. A little bit of a washboard road, yeah. and then you'll start to make a climb. But again, I can tell you, uh, Russ and Carrie from the Roads We Roam were able to get their big Class A motorhome yep. up there with no issues and plenty of room to turn around, get backed yep. in. And yep. so whether you're in a small 18-foot trailer like we are or in a big Class A, Lower Teton View will definitely just work for you. Just take your time. Yeah, just take your time. Take your time. Now, how do you find these five great campsites? Well, we like to use either the All Stays app or Campendium. And what you'll find is sometimes you'll find some of them on All Stays, like the National mm -hmm. Forestry sites. However, like Lower Teton View and Boot Jack, you'll find over on Campendium. So you can check them out there and read all the reviews. Mm -hmm. Well, Patty, I think I promised everybody a bonus yes, campsite. <laughs> so if you're coming into the Tetons from the southeast, mm -hmm. i.e., off of maybe I-80 coming up through Rollins, we would highly recommend if you need a place to stay before you get to the Tetons, Lander, Wyoming. And in Lander, Wyoming... There's Lander City Park, and it is beautiful. It's right along a river. Yeah. Um, when we got there, there was plenty of places. You just kind of pull off to the side of this road, and we just got lucky. We were right there along the river, and you could hear it. You could see it. It was clean area there was trash um, dumpsters you're right by a city park so when we got there they were kids were playing ball and so playground you, equipment mm -hmm, yep. places to walk your dogs yep, um, walking trails restrooms to use available they were unlocked for you um, you just had to make sure you cleaned up after yourself and then they asked just for a donation because yeah. they're just trying to Free. keep it nice and so we're hoping people keep making those donations because it was just beautiful it was such a nice spot yeah find. so no reservations it's first come first serve so again um, probably want to try to get there earlier in the day as opposed to later because it will fill up they do have places for both rvs and for tent mm -hmm. camping which yep. is nice yep. And it leaves you about 150 miles from Grand Teton Park. So it was the perfect place for us to stop last year as a staging area. And then that way we got up early and headed on in to find our spot at Lower Teton well, View. If I remember right, too, there was um, a little grocery store. They had a little oh, hardware store if you needed supplies and um, gas stations in little, the little town. Very well equipped if you need to resupply yeah, things. Definitely before. a great mm -hmm. place to resupply before you head on over to the Tetons. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, there was a lot in Lander, Wyoming Loved as far it. as that. One of my so, favorites. <laughs> there you go. Five favorite campgrounds in Yellowstone Teton plus a bonus yeah. campground on your way in if you're coming from the southeast. So let us know where you like to stay when you're in the Yellowstone Teton area. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us either by dropping a comment down below or reaching out to us through email at travelswithdelaney at gmail.com. Till next time, everybody. We'll see you on down the road. Good night.